Cut it off because I couldn't be bothered washing it. Oh. Is that a plan? No. I did it, I did it for a film. So. Is it a film you can talk about? It's, yeah, it's called Homeless Ashes. I wanted to change. I'm playing a homeless guy in it. Um, he's, he's a homeless guy that uh, he's lost his bar. He lives in East London, so he was kind of trendy. He was living that sort of life, and it's just about... It's not about him. He's one of the many parts of the, the, the story, but how it can happen so quickly, you know, for different reasons. And, you know... The character you're playing, PJ? PJ, yeah. So... I thought the haircut was quite, you know, kind of trendy-ish. I did want to cut my hair just to have a bit of a change, so, but yeah. And when's that uh, due to come out? I don't know. They've just finished filming it, so I guess they're in all the editing stuff now, so. Six months or further. Maybe. Six you never months. know. I've done films. I've, I've, already, I've been in films that are still not out two years later, so you never know. Sometimes it's to do with distribution. Sometimes there's internal politics. God knows. So I never really hold my breath. Once you finish a job like that, you just you're kind of done with it. Unless it's TV, when you know it's definitely coming out. But yeah. features, especially independent features, are. So besides uh, uh, the film that you just mentioned, what else have you got on the horizon? Uh, you are allowed to talk about. Yeah, yeah. Well, obviously, uh, at the moment, right now is The Innocence, which is the new Netflix original, yeah. um, which is going down. Well, I've heard on Netflix, uh, seems to be quite popular, uh, which is about shapeshifters with Guy Pearce. Uh, I actually just downloaded that the other day so I could watch it without fear. <laughs> ah, yeah, it's, it's a cool show, it's interesting. I'd love to be a part of it. And it's Farron Blackburn, who uh, is a brilliant director. He did a lot of um, Daredevil and Defenders and some of the Marvel stuff on there, so, and he was, he was great. So that's out at the moment. I did a film called Chestersburg, which will be out um, early part of next year, fingers crossed which is a cross between the Great British Bake Off and The Purge. Um, <laughs> that is literally, Absolutely I know, right? Amazing. So basically it's about, <laughs> the concept's brilliant, it's, it's, it's a mockumentary, um, and it's about a guy called uh, Chester's, Chester's the, the whole place is called Chestersburg, um, and I think he's called, I can't remember his first name, everyone calls him Chester, um, and he's found a loop in the law where he can buy this plot of land, build houses on it, and he can make his own law within this land so he's got a, so basically he makes legal, uh, murder legal so anybody who crosses that boundary if he kills them he doesn't get in trouble as long as it's over his boundary so he gets families who move there like some of them are obsessed with murder who want to do it um, so and the documentary team go in to obviously make the documentary about it um, but obviously they've crossed the line haven't they so that in itself gets interesting because there's no rules I play I play a detective who is who likes the attention of the cameras. Um, once he realises the documentary being made, obviously he's all over it. And he thinks he's, he's a right div, really. Um, but it's a great character to play, and he ends up going in to Chestersburg on his own, thinking he can handle it. It doesn't end very well for him. So that was a great thing to be involved in. So. How was it working with uh, Guy Pearce? Um, I never actually worked with him because all his stuff, uh, it's set in two different places, basically. Oh, okay. All my stuff was in London and nowhere near him. So we didn't have any scenes together. Uh, but I've heard he's fantastic. My sister actually shot a movie with him back in the day as well. So, so I knew kind of a little bit about Guy anyway. Um, but I mean, I think he's a wonderful actor. And it's great to be in a show that he's... Yeah. Involved in, it kind of gives it kudos straight away, just because he's that kind of actor. Um, I just remember him from uh, what is it, Memento. Memento was his first kind of breakthrough film, wasn't it? Yeah. Christopher Nolan film, I think it was. Yeah, and then L.A. Confidential. Yeah. Um, so those two films that kind of broke him in Hollywood, I think, because obviously he was in Neighbours before that, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah. Um, but but yeah. Yeah, yeah. But he's he's great. He's a super great actor, and it's it's great to be involved in. In that, but yeah, I'd never got to work on screen with him. So, but my, all my stuff were with the two young actors, uh, Sorica and Percy, who are phenomenal. You have to watch it for them. They're brilliant. They're really young actors, up and coming, but they're fantastic. Before we get back to Netflix, the one thing uh, I wanted to ask is, 
the mockumentary you've done of the Primeval. Mockumentary, documentary. Documentary, yeah. sorry. That's all right, no worries. Uh, documentary of Primeval. Yeah. Um, because you was a huge hit on that program. Uh, it's Connor, yeah. yeah. Was it, did they come to you to do the documentary or did you come up with the idea yourself and go to them? I can't remember, if I'm totally honest. I mean, it was a while ago now. Yeah. Um, Ten years ago. I think, I think they out. asked me. I think as far as I'm aware, they asked me. I don't think, or maybe I did put myself forward. I don't know. It was, but it was an organic thing, I think, yeah. that just happened. I know they had a, a documentary on the first season, which was more like straight-laced and stuff. Um, and I think they wanted something a bit different. And I, I think they saw me shooting stuff. I kept shooting stuff all the time. I've never not got a camera in my hand. So I think they saw me doing that on set, and I think they realised that I could get closer to the actors than a normal documentary could. Um, and which is exactly what happened. So there was like, all right, give him a camera. I mean, they did. They they employed me to do it. Like I didn't just do it. They hired me as the director for. Um, but I just get in trouble all the time because I was literally focusing on that way more than playing. I mean, it was going up to. We were running up to record. All right, everyone, and I've still got the camera in my head. Andrew, put the camera down. I'll just put it down, there. and then I'd be playing Connor, <laughs> and then I'd pick up the camera and I'd be shooting something else. Um, but I loved it. I loved it. Yeah, and I got some proper cracking. I don't know if you've seen it, but there's like. Douglas Henshaw skateboarding and falling yeah. off it, and there's loads of moments that the normal people wouldn't normally get. So that was good. There's a lot of moments that you wouldn't even get on on the special edition of the DVD. Yeah, yeah, just because I'm there, I'm, and literally because I was there every single. Because Connor was in pretty much everything, I was there all the time, and I never stopped Is that shooting. Something you'd want to pursue more, more directing. Directing is something I've always done for me. Um, I get, literally got bought a, a camcorder, luckily, when I was 13 years old and I've never stopped making stuff. Like, some of the stuff like I used to make when I was little was ridiculous, you know what I mean? But um, I've always been, you know, I've always been passionate about telling this uh, any sort of story, even if it was terrible at the start, and I've got better at it. Um, I, but, I mean, I do wireless for the web series, which we're 14 episodes in now. Um, you know, we average, like over 10,000 views per episode, which is good, you know what I mean, for no promotion and stuff. Um, and the f fan base has stayed with me for three years. Um, so I do that. Um, I won Reed um, short film competition, which is the biggest short film competition, was the biggest short film uh, competition in the country. Um, I won grand prize at that a couple of years ago. It was the last person, and then they shut down the whole thing, actually, unfortunately, for directors. No, because... It, there was that and there was um, Virgin Media Shorts and I was also, my film Little Larry was in the finalist of Virgin Media Shorts and my prize for being a finalist was your short was uh, showed in c cinemas uh, around the country for a year bet before show, before films. So that, like somebody texted me when I went to see Skyfall and I saw your short film before it. So that's a great prize really. Um, so I've always been into directing. Um, but professionally, I don't know. It's different. I don't know whether I want a boss or whether I want to... It's the difference between... It's like someone was a painter, yeah? And they painted at home for themselves yeah. or they painted for commissions and stuff. It's different, isn't it? Yeah. So I don't I don't want to be answerable to anybody in that in that creative oh. thing because I've, I've already got that part of my life. You know, I've always been told what to do as an actor. So and so you're it's only... interesting to know that you've been... Told what to do. You've been directed. Been directed, and yeah. You've done the you've done the reverse role. Yeah, well. no, but I love the I love being directed as well. Don't get me wrong. I love it. I love being an actor. But being a director is very. You know, my the way I act and how I've learned as an actor is because I guess I'm an okay director because I see the bigger picture and I'm not obsessive about myself. You know what I mean? I'm not yeah. just like all oh, focused on what I'm doing in the story. I I I enjoy the process. That's why I enjoy Primeval because it was a team effort because yeah. there was it was a cat i love ensemble casts i love walking dead and uh uh sons of anarchy things with ensemble cast where it's but you know obviously you've got your lead players but you've got all these personalities and characters that you can pull on and that makes me kind of gets me juices flowing you know what i mean i like that stuff um so yeah i kind of i kind of love directing for that for that side of stuff um but yeah for Taking it professionally, I don't know. I want to direct a feature, but I think I want to do it totally my way. Well, you've been extremely fortunate with uh, the, the roles that you've had. You've had some iconic roles, Band of Brothers, Primary. But, I mean, you've yeah, had, yeah, I've Tom had Ant's some. Son, you've done the filmy guy, Pierce. So, 
on paper, it, it, it looks absolutely phenomenal, but... I, but I'm a lot older as well than people think I am. I think that's, you know, I've done like over 70 jobs on IMDb, which I think people are impressed with when they looked at, especially the, I guess, the calibre of work that I've yeah. been lucky enough to be involved with, you know, doing a movie with Gary Oldman or whatever. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm nearly 40. So <laughs> it's just because I look a lot younger that people are even act a lot younger, I guess. I've got a young energy about me, I always have had. But I, you know, on the inside, I'm well old. So what's the secret? <laughs> <laughs> What's the secret? Because I'm in the <laughs> I don't know. I've always looked young. That was the thing that got me so successful, I think. One of the things that helped me be successful when I was younger. Because I was 20 playing 16, 15 year olds. But because they, I was knowledge more, you know, I was more grown up, I could play these characters. And they were, so I ended up playing a lot of serial killer, psychopath kind of things. But where obviously they needed a more mature brain to play it. But I looked like a kid. So this is why I got Band of Brothers. I think I play a um, sixteen-year-old in Band of Brothers. That someone who had signed up underage, Eugene Jackson. Um, but I was nineteen, twenty when I played it. And the reason I, I went for Band of Brothers four times, and I got turned down three other times because they said we like him. He just looks too young all the time. And then they decided to go with Eugene's story, which was about you know they wanted the impact of someone who looked very young. Yeah, and we're getting told to wrap it up. Yeah. Getting told to wrap it up. I love the story that yeah, you told us uh, last year because we spoke to you last year. Yeah. Uh, the one about uh, Colin Hanks. He was looking at his. You showing you. Oh, Tom Hanks' his son. Yeah, yeah. When we trained together, because we did. Uh, yeah, yeah. And he was like, I was like, How do you know Tom? He's like, Oh, he's he's my dad, dude. I was like, oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what's he been in? <laughs> <laughs> that is the story of my life, but that sort of attitude towards how I work, I've never changed, you know what I mean? And I'll be, I've never been one of these actors who pretends to know this shit. I don't fake it till I make it, I just am what I am, yeah. and I've never changed. And like, that's how I got Connor, and suddenly I got known for playing a character who is what he is, you know what I mean? And, I, and when you do get a character like that, and you're not pretending to be something you're not, it's so much fun. And plus it's on the uh, Netflix, a, a huge uh, platform, which I personally think gets more views than normal. What, today. Netflix? Yeah, yeah, and I personally am a massive Netflix fan. I mean, I'm a binge watcher anyway, so I, I love that. I think that's the future, it's the way it's going. In it. And also, they actually, t they're taking risks, man. They're making yeah. stuff that might not work, but they're putting money into stuff, yeah. like TV used to be. You know, you know, back in the day where they didn't cut something after the first season, when they give it a yeah. shot to grow. They don't do that anymore because it's too, you know, it's all about, but Netflix, that's why I respect Netflix and stuff and I like it. They are taking risks and they're making random, sh I mean, The Innocence is random, you know what I mean? It's really random, it's about shapeshifters but not in a way you've never seen it before. It's not all bells and whistles and flashy smoking mirrors, it's actually a good story that you can get your teeth into. Um, so yeah, being a part of anything on Netflix is great. That's perfect. Yeah. Well, Andrew, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, guys. Thank you.